Hello everyone, I'm Ringy Rob, and welcome to Valhalla, or I should say Glitch City. A city that shouldn't exist, a tax haven where corporations and criminal empires reign supreme. In this place, all human life has been infected with nanomachines to keep them in check. Over them stand the White Knights to ensure that a corporate and government law is obeyed. Yes, there is a quick title scroll. Here, brutality in all of its forms is an everyday re reality. The quality of life of the non-powerful decreases at an alarming rate. For many, this can be overwhelming. Some devote themselves to their jobs, their families, or even their studies. Some look for ways to escape this place, and others just give up. But for many of them, the answer lies at the bottom of a glass. On a small road just seconds away from the main street, somewhere near the slums, you can find the Hall A of the BT Certified Bar Coded VA-11. But that's a mouthful, so we just call it Valhalla. A small oasis in the middle of the concrete desert. A fountain of spirits waiting for tired souls. And it's here where this story unfolds. So yes, we are here. We are playing Valhalla, the cyberpunk bartender action game. I'm playing the Switch version, and uh, uh, the reason why I'm playing the Switch version was because I was like, I've heard of Valhalla, and I quite like the idea of a cyberpunk bartending game. It's like a visual novel, but there's more interactive minigame style gameplay to it. And I actually saw this was actually on sale on the Nintendo eShop. So I was like, you know what? I, I feel like playing a new game. Uh, I've got plenty of games to catch up on, but I felt like starting a new one today. So, I figured I might as well play the Switch version. And to note with that, I have also got the Switch Pro controller, which is what I'm using right now. But I do have the Joy-Cons to the side of me. So if we decide that we need to do the proper bartending motions with the HD rumble that I've heard so much about, then we might switch over the controls for that. So, let's get started with Valhalla. We'll start with a new game, and I think I did check out the music was fine. Thank you for playing Valhalla. This game is best played getting comfortable. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy. So sit back and relax. We hope you have a good time. All right, well, let's get started then, shall we? So other than the fact that it's a cyberpunk bartending game, I don't really know anything about this. Psst. Hey, over here. Boo. How's that for an entrance? Come on, Joe, look sharp. The game starting on the plane is a good first impression of its main character. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend and the bar will eventually close. And I'll admit, my little prank in you might have gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. I have no idea what the brighter side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. See ya. All right, so that was Anna. And this is Jill. Oh. <sighs> Just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter 1, Primera. So actually, on the, the title screen, there was a plus sign in the top, top left corner. That actually lets you go into a prologue, and I'm not sure whether I should have done that first now. Your membership to Shining Fingered would automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup app. You can now browse the Augmented Eye. Welcome, Jill. So there's the boss, and there's me. So we can hold to unlock. So I'm using the D-pad to switch everything around here. All right, so you can see a real lifetime view of Jill in her apartment and a sleeping cat on the table. So, who is that letter from? Uh, nobody. So we got... Options to do for go to work. Obviously, we don't do that. We can hold to unlock our phone. I think that's all we can do. So let's do that. All right. Welcome, Jill. Ooh, what's this exclamation? The augmented eye. Mass emigration continues as Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Cyborg in heels returns next year. Okay. So here's our save that we probably should have done the first time before we start on the prologue. But there we go. That's saved for us. And let's add an app. No, we can't add an app. 
Nope. Just big buttons that don't do anything. Okay, makes sense. Well, in that case, let's just head to work. Tuesday, December 13th. Good evening. Ah, hey there, Jill. Oh, hey, John. When will you admit you have a John face, Gil? Oh, it's it's Jillian. Or Gillian? No, that'll be Jillian. When you let people call you jewels. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's boss? Dunno. She went out to buy some stuff and... Did you hear what I just told you? You said something? Yes, then you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about stuff. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful, and... Ah. There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. Not to mention the fact that two days ago I found out the bar is at risk of closing. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, neutering four left with me a completely empty wallet, and I'll get evicted if I miss a rent again. And there are all the beer cans around my apartment, and... Jill! Sorry, did you say something? Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we? Just in case. If you can make a piano man, I'll skip the rest, but bear with me for a second here. Let's start with a sugar rush. Look for the recipe using the navigation bar in the recipe book that will show up on the top left. You'll use the directional buttons to move the cursor between the choices in the recipe book. You can also sort drinks by flavors like sweet or types like manly. To add ingredients to the shaker, push the left analog stick in the direction of the desired ingredient. While the desired ingredient is highlighted, press A to add one unit of that ingredient. Gil. When you're done adding ingredients, press ZR to mix the drink, then press it again to stop mixing. If the drink is properly made, just press ZR to serve it, and that'll be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll need to press ZL to reset and try again. You can use ZL to reset at any time, even while the shaker is moving. Don't be afraid to use it. Gil, I'm the one that went through the formal BTC instruction. Then this should be no problem. <sighs> Gil wants either a sugar rush or a piano man. If I mess up the ingredients of the drink, I can press the reset button to try again. Well, let's try a sugar rush then, shall we? So, two Edelhide and one powdered delta with optional carmatrine, all mixed. Sweet, light, and fruity, as girly as it gets. Sweet, girly, happy. So, one, two, one. Optional carmatrine mix. It's got a pretty funky soundtrack, this game. Liking it already. All right, let's stop. Oh, okay. So maybe there's a certain amount of time you have to do it. Okay. Or maybe it's the optional stuff that I'm adding that isn't necessarily needed. Let's try this. <laughs> Do, 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 do. And stop. Failed. Whoa, I'm getting low battery on my controller. Okay, well, if that's the case, I should probably switch over. Uh, and to do that, we will just do a quick switch. Da, 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 da. Change grip slash order. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. All right. Do some Joy-Con action instead. All right, so reset. It'll hide. Uh, one powder delta mix. So I'm going to leave it a lot longer this time to see how the HD rumble reacts. Because I think I might have been leaving it. I might have been making it stop too quickly. For all I know, the fact that the HD rumble gets a little bit quicker once it gets to a higher shake might mean that I need to let it go a little bit longer. Okay. That feels like it's long enough. So let's try stock. No. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. What about a Piano Man? Piano Man is two. Wow. Two Edelhide, three Bronson Extract, five Powder Delta, five Planet Guide, and three Carmatrine, all on the rocks and mixed. 
This drink does not represent the opinions of the Bar Pianist Union or its associates. Sour Promo Strong. Okay, well, let's go one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, you can stack units. One, two, three. Okay, so ice and mix. So if you can stack units together, then maybe when it says one unit, you actually need to put in double. Well, that would count that as a double shot. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Well, we'll let it go mixing, mixing, mixing. Okay, and stop. Hmm. I'm not I'm not quite understanding what the game wants me to do when I'm trying to mix in. Let's go back to Sugar Rush as the easier one to do. So two Edelheid. And then one Powder Delta, yeah? Is that right? All mixed. Oh, you're not supposed to mix it that much. That's the problem. I'm waiting way too long. Okay. Here, happy now? A little, but not quite. Let's do one more. Ugh. I know, I know. Please humor me for a bit. Some drinks need to be blended. This is done by mixing it for over five seconds. You can tell it's being blended when the shaker starts moving faster. On a side note, the vibration of the shaker will feel more dramatic once the drink has become blended. You also need to check if the drink should be served on the rocks or aged. To add ice, use the X button. To age a drink, use the Y button. And in case it wasn't obvious, on the rocks means you have to toggle the ice option. It should be noted that the station will add the ice after mixing. It's not something you should mind though, it's just a fun fact. Give me a moon blast and I'll leave you alone. Keep in mind what I said. Yeah, yeah. Let's give Gil a moon blast. Blended drinks need to be left to mix for at least five seconds before I stop the shaker. Okay, I was leaving it to go way too long is my problem. Okay. So, moon blast means going here. A moon blast is six Edelheide, one powder delta, one flanagide, and two carmatrine, all on the rocks and blended. No relation to the Hadron cannon you can see on the moon for one week every month. Sweet, girly, and happy. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, one. Oh, no, 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 not, not you. Uh, let's get the speed back up. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, one. One, two. So add ice, mix. Because it's blended, we need to leave it to go for ages. There we go. See, I was leaving it to go way too long. All right, got it. Here, did I amuse you for long enough? You did. Sorry to hold you. Let's get working. Yeah. Oh, yeah, before I forget. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional carmatrine, it means you can use none or fill it to the brim. Optional carmatrine doesn't count towards making a big drink, of course. Carmatrine is the alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. If you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful of that. Are you done with the exposition? Now I am, yeah. Hey, guys! Oh, but, huh? Who's that? I don't know. Found her while I was out shopping. Why bring her here? Well, it was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest or bring her unconscious body in here. That sounds a bit disconcerting. She's going to make such a ruckus when she wakes up, you know that? That's up for you to deal with. I'll be in my office. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There are two of you. Believe in yourselves. Ah. <sighs> Do you think Chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. And it's not like her to pick on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. 
Yes, I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Um, come again? While you spend the whole weekend and Monday doing God's know what, we've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs. Lots of them. You're joking. Gil, you've known me for how long? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well... So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun. Just that. Fine, I see no problem. Where's the cleaning stuff? Hey. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. Fine. With that out of the way, let's play some music on the new jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before it can start. I wonder what was the logic behind that decision. I wonder indeed. All right, so we'll go Welcome to Vandhalla, and then Sequential seems to be fine. All systems go. All right, done. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, you, get me a beer. Oh, sure, right on it. He wants a beer. He looks like quite the big guy, though. So we want him to get beer. A beer is one Edelheide, two bronze and extract, one powdered delta, two flanagide, and four calmatrine. All mix. Traditionally, brewed beer has become a luxury, but this one's pretty close to the real deal. Bubbly, classic, and vintage. So let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it is already a big drink because it's got ten ingredients. So that's fine. Uh, so two of you, one of you, two of you, and then one, two, three, four. Okay. And we'll mix. And then we'll stop. Success! There you go. No, no. This isn't going to cut it. Give me a big one. Um, sure. That beer wasn't enough, apparently. So to make a big beer, it was to double up, right? So one, two. One, two, three, four. One. One, two, three, four. Add another powder delta. And then fill up the rest with Karmatrine. All right, mix it all up and stop. Success, a big beer. How about this one? Ah, yes, now this one's fit for a man like me. Right, you're lucky I was meeting the meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a presence like mine. Although to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes like New Jersey 3. Huh, what kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then? Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about the urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's? That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write about it, my interns do. The poor bastards think it'll help them make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker? But not all the daily stories about murders and other horrors? Well, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lonely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt in the lack of traffic. Still. Maybe our job would be easier. How so? People get dissent, dis people get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. Death's not enough. They need a full sub story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easy to write about and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot. And even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. Huh. I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Oh, I hate those brats. 
They'll just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. The worst part about it is that they know half of our clicks come from them, so they get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the colonists in your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column? Um, oh, shit. Forgot the brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the new paper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming out asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one then. Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Relaxes beers. They come cheaper in bulk at the store, though. All right. So let's remind myself again. So one, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. And then top it up with Karma Tree. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Ah, it's the big things that make life worthwhile. What about big troubles? Did I stutter, kid? Right. So, tell me. Do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Who is that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really. At least, not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. Especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks pretend to love, but blah. Those folks people pretend to love, but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love the celebs, but what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. You thought wrong. But even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I failed to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating God knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, indecency but still. Oh, please. As a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always love to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. Even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl's wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. Oh, that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see they're human. Hey, is that dude that plays the nice guy is really indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help, sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, brat? Well, two can play that game of... Hmm? <clears throat> hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat hellbent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. 
Maybe. Why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell, cal sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and they get uh, excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have your ghost writing. Half of our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Anyway. Eventually, the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did I say something wrong? Not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or Boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. It is. Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general. But Mr. Donovan? Now that's more like it. They're referring to me. To the man in front of them. Not to my family. Not to my position as boss. To me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, God, no. But I want them to fear me. Not because I'm their boss or their name appearing in their paychecks. But rather because I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh, yeah. You were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one? Do you? Ah, yes, yes. But I need to cut myself off. I just remembered to have a night shift later. Give me something bitter. And big. But not alcoholic. I need to wake myself up. I can do that. Bitter, big, with no alcohol at all. So, let's go for bitter. And how do we know whether it's got alcohol in? Oh, Calmatrine's alcohol. Okay. So, we've got Sunshine Cloud, Gut Punch. Uh, da, 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 da. That's got alcohol in. That's got alcohol in. All right, well... Let's go ahead and do Bronson, Extract, and Flanagide. Gut Punch. Cool. All right. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One Flanagide, two Flanagide. We're going to age it and mix it. Success. Serve it up. Here you go. Paint me blue and call me Sue. You can actually do it. This will let me stay up late tonight. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? You didn't call it a hellhole? There was some bloke named Sven that wants to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their noses and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kind of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive, and there's always that one guy or girl that says, hey, why don't you do what that other newspaper does? Recently, they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks! I make sure they keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up, but it's never enough for them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks? I'll give them more clicks. I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Should I be worried? Nah. 